Jesus. Right. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our channel. Today, we wanted to make a video on the coronavirus situation and talk a little bit about how this could potentially impact immigration and our clients. I'm here with my executive assistant, Jolie. Uh, so she's joining us today um, so she can discuss with us a little bit uh, later on in the video how our office functions and uh, how we're going to be continuing to work on files for our clients. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is how immigration is canceling uh, major events in terms of when a lot of people are together. So, for example, all citizenship ceremonies, um, landing appointments, interviews. Uh, so these are posted on the immigration website. Uh, we've also received uh, some emails for some of our clients who had, for example, a citizenship interview scheduled next week. That has been a citizenship oath ceremony that has been uh, rescheduled. Well, not rescheduled, but canceled essentially. Um, so, of course, these are very disappointing and it's scary because you know you're like well I was gonna become a citizen and now I'm not but in those cases it's not that bad because you know you know you already gone through all the processes and there's just like an administrative step uh, in order to to overcome that and I know by reading because in our legal community we have access um, to a group of lawyers from the Ontario Bar Association there's an immigration section where all the immigration lawyers can talk to each other and share information. And it's amazing to have this group as lawyers because we get sometimes information uh, first and we can share it with our clients and the public. And I read that um, some appointments might be done over the phone for landing, for example, or some interviews. Uh, I think if this pandemic situation goes on for a long time, I think these measures will be put in place, especially nowadays with the technologies that we have. Uh, I think it might create a new way of working and uh, and doing things. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to become a citizen by doing it over the phone or by Skype, but perhaps that's, that's the future. Uh, I'm not sure of that. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention is that already we have some of our clients that have messaged us and emailed us like, what's going to happen with my file? What's going to happen if I'm applying for a visa? I've heard that Canada is not issuing any visas right now. Offices are closing. What's important to know is that it's very important to look at the Immigration and Citizenship website, uh, or if you have dealings with Canada Border Service Ag Agency, to look at that website, um, to look at official government website about health and you know transport, customs, travel, because there's a lot of blogs out there, a lot of website, a lot of fake news. A lot of people will write certain things. There's one website that's going around saying that no visa is being issued, uh, or even like Canadians cannot even come to Canada and things like that. So. You know, I think in this situation, a lot of people have panicked. In some situations, understandably, it's, it's scary, especially in North America. We've never really experienced something like this. Um, but my recommendation is to look at the official websites and wait for information and listen to what authorities are, are saying. Um, it, about traveling and borders. So, for example, we had one client ask us, well... Um, I have to apply for uh, my family members applying for a visa, but how am I uh, going to get the, how are the documents going to come to Canada? So, for example, there's a lot of applications that we can do online. For example, a visitor visa, a super visa, and an extension application. Our office does them all online, and we actually don't even need physical documents. We just need scanned copies. Um, I have not yet heard of courier companies like FedEx, FedEx Canada Post, and things like that, like Halt. Uh, operations. So if we do need original documents, I think the mail is still okay. And hopefully, you know, that'll keep working and we could get documentation. Um, now, I know in a lot of situations, for example, um, you know, people, we have deadlines, for example, for files and uh, clients have to get biometrics or photos or medical examinations, police certificates, right? And they can't, you know, if they're in a country where there's a curfew or they can't get out, well, they can't get any of those documentations done and there's deadlines. Um, but what the information that we receive from immigration is that they're going to apply additional time. So I don't think anybody is going to be negatively affected by this because they couldn't meet the timeline because of uh, circumstances outside of their control. So I'm really not worried about that. 
Uh, what we're telling our clients is if, you, if you're confused, if you, you're wondering what's going to happen, there's a deadline, you have to do a biometric and you're not sure, just call us. Call us first. You can go on the website, on the government website, but better call us first because sometimes we have other information um, from our legal community that's maybe not online that's going to be more beneficial for you. So instead of talking to other people, talking to friends, looking online and getting scared and panic, call us and we'll guide you the, the right way. And if we don't know the answer, we'll look into it, we'll research and we'll let you know. Um, there are talks today, for example, uh, I think the Prime Minister announced that they're closing the borders uh, for um, not for Canadians and permanent resident and certain flight you know, diplomats and crews, but they're trying to mitigate the, the situation and there, there's exceptional circumstances where you wouldn't be able to travel to Canada. now. That is, that is a big deal, I think, for a lot of people. It's going to be a big deal for a lot of clients. But we don't know how long this is going to last. So it's important to take things day by day. Um, at the office, we try our best to keep up with the news as you know in real time. So if you're wondering what's going to happen with your flight, you let us know. If there's something we can do to contact immigration on your behalf, we'll do it. If there's ex exceptional circumstances, we'll, we'll try our best. Um, Last thing is about about this is information changes very fast. So, you know, we're Monday, March 16th today. I think it was on Friday that the government announced that um, kind of state of emergency, only go out if you have to, um, and all, you know, public places have been closed. Uh, your school has been closed yeah. for how long? For roughly two weeks and then going online two weeks following that. So close for indefinite period to so, the public. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, things change a lot. So we have to sometimes, especially that this is very new. I mean, maybe next week things will be completely different. Maybe next month things will get back to normal. You know, I heard that things will get worse before they get better, but... Maybe it won't take that long, and you know we have to trust our government. Um, we have to trust that our leaders are going to put things in place. Uh, and, and you know the idea is that we tr everybody tries our we try our best to do social distancing, uh, so that we don't affect the most vulnerable people. Um, so, for example, um, in our office, um, we're tr taking some measures. Um, so I'm going to let Jolie talk a little bit about what measures we decided to, to take today. We are still fully operational, um, so you can tell us a little bit what, what we've kind of decided to do. Yeah, so I mean, I think it's great that our office already has these effective measures and effective policies in place that where we don't actually need to be in the office to yep. work. So our office is largely paperless, and that has over the time been very advantageous to us, especially now. Um, so we don't actually have clients coming in for consultations anymore. They're not coming in to deliver documents. But again, as Mary says, businesses, as usual, we're still working tirelessly to fi finalize these applications. Yeah. And if anything, we're reachable by phone, by email, and many of our clients send in documents by email anyways. So we're doing our part to try and limit the amount of social contact that we have with our clients while still maintaining uh, our usual office flow. So I think that's really important for people who are looking either to hire us or current clients that we already have, that we're still, you know, we're still uh, working on their applications in a timely manner. Exactly. So we had a, a staff meeting today and um, we decided that, you know, some of most of our staff would like to work from home. So, you know, it's not complicated for us. We bring the computers at home. We transfer lines, printers. And because we're paperless, because we have... Um, everything on a very safe and secure cloud-based system. Um, we're very organized in this office and we're very proud of that. So I think in a, in a situation like this, uh, it allows us to use those tools even more. Uh, so like Julie said, like we, you know, we, we, we talk on the phone, we do Skype, we fax, we get faxes, we email, we Google chat between each other. Uh, our staff has a WhatsApp group that we communicate if need be. So with today's technologies, I mean, we've been doing this for a very long time. And I think in a situation like this, it's, it's perfect. Um, for our current clients, um, like I said, if you have any questions about your file or the future, you contact us and we'll, we'll give you information as we, we, we go. If for some reason, this is one thing that I wanted to talk about, I don't know if immigration is actually going to shut down their offices. I, I know 
there's a lot of different immigration offices in Canada. Obviously, there's all the embassies and the high consulates and um, outside Canada. But in Canada, there's, you know, in Sydney and Edmonton, Vancouver, Ottawa, Montreal, a lot of offices. I don't know how big those spaces are. I don't know how many people work in those offices. I don't know if those government employees work from home, if they have online systems. So <clears throat> I, I'm not sure if at some point they're going to say we cannot file, ap don't file applications anymore because if no one's working and we're just sending application and they're piling up in a mail room, I don't know if immigration is okay with that. But then in some cases, we need to lock in applications. For example, mm -hmm. if a, ch um, a dependent child is going to turn 20, uh, 22, so what's going on with that? So we'll find out as we get along. I think it's important to give some time to these agencies to, you know, figure out, you know, there's urgent situations like borders and, you know, canceling festivals and big events. But, uh, for example, the IRB... Uh, Immigration Refugee Board, um, CBSA, they have shut down a lot of their uh, uh, non-urgent services and they've also delayed all hearings. But in terms of IRC actually processing, like can we file, file things online? Can we submit an espousal sponsorship? They haven't really given notice about that. I think what they've talked about is delays, potential delays on certain applications, uh, especially for example, landing appointments and, and things like that. But if for some reason we can't file an application, but you know, you've know you hired us, well, what we're implementing is that, well, we work on your file. This is a good opportunity to have more time to perfect your application. We put it on hold, and then when things reopen, which I'm sure they will, then we reopen, we reassess, we update the forms if need be, and, and we take it from there. Um, if uh, there's a lot of delays on your file, I mean, delays in immigration, we're used to that, right? So there might be now more delays. I don't know how long, uh, but there's just, just something, uh, you know, expected uh, in these kind of situations. And like I said, I, you know, if we get information that immigration is not accepting applications, then we have a newsletter, we have a Facebook page, we advise clients. When we do consultations now, we're very upfront and honest. We say, look, okay, you want to do a spousal sponsorship, but just so you know, this is the current situation. So... If things happen, we might put your file on hold. It's not going to jeopardize your uh, your your file with us. We're not going to charge additional legal fees. We're going to uh, put it aside. If for some reason when we reopen, there's a new situation, maybe reassess in terms of uh, legal fees. But um, it's something that we've done before a lot, especially when there was parental sponsorship caps. Um, we couldn't file the application because the cap was met, so we would put the file on hold and reopen the, the following year. Um... So, yeah, I think that's that's everything. Um, like I said, a staff can work from home uh, if need be. Um, we have means to communicate with each other. Um, FedEx, Courier, we're asking our clients to send the application to us, even our Montreal. We have clients in my, we're in Montreal and we have an office in Toronto. Uh, our processing office is mainly in Montreal. Uh, we're asking even our clients in Montreal to not come to the office, but FedEx the documentation to us. We have a lot of clients in all provinces. We have clients outside Canada. So scanning documentation is not an issue. FedExing documentation is not an issue. We actually have a lot of clients that we've never met. Um, I, if, you know, a lot of times we do Skype consultations, but sometimes I've, many times I've talked to clients from beginning to end over the phone or by email and I actually only see what they look like if I get a photo. Uh, so that's something that we're very familiar with. And I, like I said, with today's technology, um, it's good for, for our law firm that we can still continue helping people. Um, we're going to send out a newsletter soon with all of this information. We're going to, like I said, we have a Facebook page. And we every month we send out a newsletter. Um, if you're thinking of filing up an application, you have an inquiry, you can contact us. We schedule phone or Skype consultations for the time being. Uh, we give a lot of information by email. And my advice is to not panic. Uh, take it day by day. Uh, I know it's hard for a lot of businesses, a lot of people, especially, you know, I just think in our world, in, in the world that we, we work in, you know, I'm thinking about elderly people that had to travel to Canada or people that had to you know, come and help with like a newborn, you know, immigration visas. This affects like real people. It's real problems. But it's important to take it day by day as things unfold uh, and to call us. If you have a question, um, contact us. Um, is there anything you wanted to add?
Julie. Well, I think, I mean, also in light of the recent events, one, to not panic, but to two, also uh, refer to reliable sources yes. of information. So stay away from Facebook, stay away from yep. blogs, fear-mongering, all this. It's really important to go to government websites, yes. World Health Organization, in terms of immigration, IRCC, and the IRB websites are really useful, and they provide news daily updating the situation. So I think if you're in one of these vulnerable situations, to refer to these sources, and from there you'll get credible uh, information. Exactly. And as lawyers, law firms, we get a lot of information from our bar association. So I'm a member of the Quebec Bar. I'm a member of the Law Society in Ontario, um, member of the Ontario Bar Association. And they've been amazing at providing information about how to, you know, what are you going to do with your law firm? How are you going to deal with your clients? What source to look at? Um, so if you have a lawyer, talk to your lawyer. If you're really confused about something, get on a call with a lawyer, send an email, get some information to get the, the right information. Um, so thank you. And thank you, Jolie, for participating. And uh, we'll see you in our next video. And hopefully next time things will be a little bit better out there in the world. Thank you.